Hey, what's up guys? Joker here and I hope you're all doing well. Today I am going to be teaching you a very, very simple trick for how to make your graphics card run a fair amount cooler with a extremely simple tweak that you can actually do in just one click. And no, this is not clickbait. And yes, for you enthusiasts out there, this is probably going to be fairly obvious, maybe something you're already doing, but for some of you out there, maybe it's something that you're not doing, so we're going to get fired right into it. But first, today's video is brought to you by MMORC.com, where you can save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro, which you can get for just $15, as well as Office 2019 Pro and Office 365. And if you act right now, you can get an additional 27% off with my code JOK27 at checkout, and that'll knock the price down on Windows 10 Pro from $15.29 all the way down to $11.16. And of course, they accept a wide variety of payment from PayPal to credit cards to Bitcoin. So be sure to act now and hit up the links down in the description below. Now for this tweak, you are going to need to be using MSI Afterburner, although you may be able to do it in other uh, overclocking softwares, um, you know, stuff like uh, EVGA Precision X or whatever else you might possibly be using. I just personally prefer uh, the layout of MSI Afterburner. I'll have a link down in the description below um, to where you can grab that. And the, fi the fix or the, the tweak that I'm talking about is really to just use the default, which is sounds weird, uh, the default custom fan curve within MSI Afterburner, which is not enabled by default, and it helps the card run a fair amount cooler, about five degrees uh, in the test that I'm gonna be doing here in this video. I've got some side-by-side -side comparison uh, on my RTX 3080 Founders Edition on the Bright Memory Infinite benchmark, which is a fairly new benchmark uh, over on Steam. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below uh, as well. But this is on the 3080 Founders Edition uh, stock versus running just the custom fan curve and no other adjustments in any way whatsoever. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up MSI uh, Afterburner here, which on your version, it might look a little bit different than this. Um, this is a, a custom skin, but basically you just want to get into um, the settings. So we'll go ahead and open up that there. This will all look the same, um, you know, no matter which skin you're running on Afterburner once you're actually in the settings window. Uh, but once you're in here, you just want to go onto the fan tab. And by default, this enable user-defined software automatic fan control will be disabled. So what you want to go ahead and do is put that on and hit apply. Now, even just doing that without doing any custom tweaks to this fan curve line, you will actually see your card running cooler and it actually is not going to be running significantly faster. So it's not going to really be an audible difference, something that you can actually hear while you're playing a game. Only runs about, uh, in, my, in my test, it was running about maybe 10% roughly faster um, than, you know, with, with this not enabled. So I couldn't really hear a difference at all but I could definitely see it in terms of the temperatures and actually the clock speeds were a little bit better as well at stock without doing any other overclocking. Now, of course you can go in here, you can customize and change this to your heart's consent and move this around and you know change it any way you want. But I find just using this default custom curve by enabling this option helps immensely. And I've definitely noticed it even more recently on the RTX 3080 Founders Edition card since that has come out. There's been times when I've been in games and I had been maybe messing around with overclocking and I had reset stuff in Afterburner and forgot to put this on and my card would sometimes be running up around 77 degrees Celsius playing on Mafia Definitive Edition recently and I was just like, what is going on here? My card is running seriously warm and I keep my room at a locked 15 degrees Celsius. That's 60 degrees Fahrenheit with the air conditioner running um, and I did that for the side-by-side -side test as well. So I would see it at like 77 degrees. I was like, man, this card's running pretty warm. And then I would realize I forgot to put the fan curve back on, put it on, and then the card would be running around like 68, 69, maybe 70 degrees, kind of pushing it up to there. So yeah, in a typical uh, use case in like a DirectX 11 title, the temperatures were actually even lower than the side-by-side -side bright memory benchmark, which is using a lot of ray tracing. It's also using DLSS, a very healthy amount of the 10 gigabytes of available video memory on the RTX 3080. So this kind of test right here is really pushing the GPU uh, to its limits. It's using the GPU core, it's using the RT cores, it's using the tensor cores for DLSS, and it's using almost all of the video memory or about eight gigabytes or so 
of the video memory on board. So it's very, very, um, you know, very harsh test for the GPU. And as you guys can see, the temperatures uh, with the fan curve off are a fair bit higher. And this test I let run for 10 minutes exactly. I ran a timer so that this was a straight up apples to apples comparison. I let the GPU cool down uh, in between tests by running the fans at like 100% for a few minutes to bring the temperature all the way down um, and then run the test again with the regular uh, custom fan curve on uh, versus just running it at stock. And we'll go ahead and take a look at some results here uh, using CapFrame X, which I recently did a full detailed video on. If you want to go ahead and check that out, if you want to use it for any, any uh, benchmarking needs. But this is CapFrame X right here and the results of the stock uh, test. This is the sensor statistics. I also, you know, there's frame rates and stuff like that. I'll show you in a moment. Uh, but this is just the sensor statistics for running it at stock without the fan curve. You could see on the GPU temp, our average temperature was 77 degrees Celsius and the maximum was 79, which is what I was seeing towards the end of the 10 minute run. It was pretty much sitting at 78 to 79 degrees, kind of fluctuating back and forth between the two. And with our custom fan curve put on, which just required one click again, our average GPU temperature was brought down to 72 degrees Celsius with a maximum of 74. And again, it was getting up to 74 um, pretty consistently towards the end of the run, but it averaged 72 over a 10 minute stretch. But if you were playing a game, you know, for an hour, maybe two, three hours, a multiplayer title that was um, as demanding as this, you know, this is the type of, you know, difference you would expect to see about five degrees Celsius difference running stock versus the custom fan curve, which was extremely easy to do. Uh, also got a comparison of the frame rates here, which surprisingly there was a um, small difference here. Uh, this run right here is the um, one with the custom fan curve running at 51 average frames per second versus 50.6 on the stock fan curve, just right out of the box, no adjustments whatsoever. So 0.4 frames per second, not exactly a lot, but hey, it was there and we can actually see why that is. It's because of the cooler temperatures, the card was actually boosting a small amount more. We'll go back again to the, sen the sensor statistics. Again, this is the stock settings right here. You could see that the GPU clock was running at an average of 1861 megahertz and a maximum of 1965, but that was very, very brief. Um, basically, the average was 1861. While if we look at the custom fan curve, the average over a 10 minute run was 1881 megahertz. So that's not a short blip right there. We're talking about a 10 minute run. The card is running five degrees cooler and it is running about 20 megahertz faster just by using a simple click. And, you know, the card was, you know, using around 64, 65% fan speed versus like 50 to 55 on the stock. So only a 10% increase um, in, in, in how the fans were running. Again, something that I really couldn't audibly hear a difference in, but you could definitely notice it in the temps. And we do get a very, very minor bump in terms of performance. And of course, if you were going to do something like overclocking, this would help you even more as you are going to be increasing your temperatures even further if you're pushing up things like power limits, core clocks, memory clocks, all that stuff. So this is something I think everyone should really be doing. Again, I said at the start, for enthusiasts, this is probably going to be something fairly obvious that you may be already doing or have already dabbled around with. But I've definitely noticed with the 3080 that it has been extremely beneficial in helping keeping the Founders Edition card running cool. And honestly, in normal gaming scenarios, I am hardly ever seeing this card hitting 70 degrees Celsius and definitely not really going above that. This was a very extreme case. Um, as I said, you know, the GPU being pushed, RT cores, tensor cores, everything on the GPU really being used here uh, for this bright memory infinite benchmark. And in that case, it was getting up around into the low, low to mid 70s, but still running cooler than running at the stock curve. So go ahead and utilize this. Grab yourself MSI Afterburner and try it out for yourself. And, you know, post your results down in the comments below if you've seen any improvement at all. Uh, on your GPU temps. I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here though. Um, I'll have links to everything in the description. Um, I'll put a link down there for Cap Frame X, MSI Afterburner. Uh, if there's anything else I mentioned, uh, the, the benchmark over on Steam, if you want to try the Bright Memory Infinite benchmark, which does require an RTX graphics card, you can use a 20 series or a 30 series, doesn't matter, but it has to have ray tracing on the uh, RTX features on the card in order to be able to go ahead and use it uh, or support for it, I guess, since they did technically do that on like 10 series cards, I think, uh, at some point. So maybe a 10 series card will work, but really this is for uh, RTX graphics cards. So if you want to try it out, 
Um, the benchmark will be there. It's completely free. It's over on Steam, uh, so you can get it on there if you want. So I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. Please let me your thoughts and everything down in the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video or learned something new. If you did, leave a thumbs up. And I will catch you all tomorrow for another video.